Good morning, everyone. As always, place the cross on first. This is a Sabbath day teaching. You know, uh, I don't like to talk about my personal business too much, but sometimes I have to, to explain a point. You know, one thing about being a man of God, you know, people will try to understand your situation better than you understand your own situation. Well, instead of explaining my situation to anyone, I'm just going to break it down in Scripture. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Let me, let me read that last line again. Next to the last. Deliver us from evil. Alright, let me start off by reading one verse. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh a shame is a rottenness in his bones. Did you hear that? Yes, the, the, the man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Hmm. But did you hear the fine print? But she that make of a shame is a rottenness in his bones. Let's go back to some more Proverbs. Let's read some verses on women. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. I mean, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. I mean, 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. What did he say? Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. All right. When God explains the husband and wife in Ephesians, right? He said a man is to cleanse his wife by the washing of the word. What if the word is not cleansing her? You see, you have to love your wife like Christ loved the church but what if your wife is not behaving like a virtuous woman hmm I just want to throw that out there what are you supposed to do you, you cleanse your wife by the washing of the word right you tell her what the word says a wife's supposed to submit to her husband right alright let's keep going to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? So does he that goeth unto his neighbor's wife. Whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he still to satisfy his soul, be his hunger. But if he be found, he shall... Restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroy his own soul. A wound and his honor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he would not spare in the day of vengeance. He would not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content though he though thou givest many gifts. Hmm. Chapter 7, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live and my laws as the apple of thy eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thy heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call to understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flattereth with her words. Hmm. For at the window of my house I look through my casement. And behold, among the simple one, I discern among the youths a young man void of understanding passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. And the twilight in the evening, a black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Hmm. Now is she without? 
down the streets and life and wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him and him with an impudent face, said to him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligent to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with the linen, fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with mirror, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us silence ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone in a long journey. He that taketh a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth away, go after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hastens to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me, therefore, you children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thy heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she has cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Amazing. So, let's go back again. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh a shame is a rotten in the city's bones. Hmm. It's one proverb we say, a man would deliver him, the Lord would deliver him from such a woman. Do you understand? Okay, when you pray to the Lord, I, I read the Lord's Prayer today, you keep praying that prayer. Or if you got a husband or something like that, you think God's going to keep letting you be taken advantage of? Keep being mistreated. Yes, God loves marriage. God hates the disobedience too. He hates rebellion too. There are many ways to rebel against the Lord. You see, people like to use scripture to fit what they want. You understand? You can't leave me. You are you're supposed to take care of your wife. My wife's supposed to take care of me and help me out. She's supposed to make me feel bad. She's supposed to be bad, bad about me on Facebook. She's supposed to be running around with other people, being a busybody that other people matters. You understand? She's supposed to be hanging around with other guys. She's supposed to be talking to other guys. Hmm. Hmm. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that make of a shame is a rottenness in his bones. Let's go to Esther. Let's go to Esther, people. Everybody wants the roof characteristic. Everybody wants the roof. The roof deal. Everybody want to be roof. But a lot of y'all ain't roof. A lot of y'all the other woman. A lot of y'all ain't Esther. A lot of y'all the other woman. The book of Esther. Hope you got time. I got time. Now it came to pass in the days of Osiris. This is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India into, even into Ethiopia, over in 107 and 20 provinces. And in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Susan, the palace. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellency majesty in many days, even a hundred and four score days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shusha in the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of king's palace, where with white, green, and blue hangings, fasting with crowds, cords of fine linen, and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red, and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drinking vessels of gold, and vessels being diverse one from another, and the raw wine in abundance according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel, for though so the king had appointed to all the officers of the house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was married with wine, he commanded Mahum, Bista, Habona, Bicta, and Abagat, Zithar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the princes of Ahasuerus, 
the king to bring Basti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen Basti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise man, which knew the times, for so was the king's matter toward all the new law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshina, Shethar, Admata, Tarshish, Meris, Rosina, and Mamuka, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face, which sat the first in the kingdom. So first thing you're going to realize, he was upset and he was disrespected by his wife, the queen. Let's see what happened. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law? Because she have not performed the commandment of the king, Osiris, by the chamberlains. I know what you're going to say. Well, that's got something to do with Persia. <laughs> Whatever. And Mimikans answered before the king and princess, Vashti, the queen, have not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in the provinces of the king of Hosseris. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. When it shall be reported, the king Hosseris commanded Vashti, the queen, to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say, this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before the king of his series, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Let me tell you something, people. You think the Lord wants you to stay with a woman that dishonors you, disrespects you, treats you horribly, ridicules you, bad mouths you? Every time you tell them to do one thing, they do another. Whom the Lord loves, he chastises. If a man loves his wife, he chastises her. Because you're supposed to love your wife and nurture her like the Lord loves the church. And whom the Lord loves, he does what too? He chastises. I'm not saying uppercut your wife or drop kick her. I'm saying chastise her like the Lord. You see, a lot of people don't understand the scripture because they don't read it. They read that one line. You got to understand whom the Lord loves, he chastises. Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Do you understand? So if you love your wife, you will chastise her. You will correct her. What if she don't want correction? Well, let's see. That vast to come no more before the king of her service and let the king give her royal state to another that is better than she. That works both ways, though. Did you hear the story of David? When a woman was married to this man who was horrible and the man disrespected David and the Lord caused him to die and his wife became David's wife? Oh, y'all better read this Bible with a fine tooth comb. He said, study to show yourself approved. You see, people think they can do what they want to men and women of God with no punishment, with no avail, and they try to use scripture let me tell you something. You can't use what you don't understand. And when the king decreed, which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great. All the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the same pleased the king and the princess and the king did according to the word of Mimukin. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces. And to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. What if your wife don't want to listen to you? What if your wife disrespects you in your own house? The thing is, I always tell people this. 
what God put together, let no man put asunder. But the truth of the matter is, no man could put it asunder. But God can. God can put any marriage asunder. He can bring any marriage back together. That's God. But man, think about all the people that destroy marriages and stuff like that. It's just read you some things from Proverbs. Hmm. But what happened? He replaced Vishti, the rottenness to his bones, with Esther. Hmm. Y'all better be careful out there. When you're fooling with somebody that know the word, you can't use the word against them if they understand it. People. Esther. Good woman. God sets one up and brings one down. God sets one up and brings one down. Do you understand? Don't get to the point where you're brought down. You ever saw the movie Atrimony with Batella Perry and the woman was always listening to her friends and her family members about her husband. He cheated in the past. She forgave him. That's before they got married. Then he got married to her. And he was had an invention and he was trying his best to get that invention marketed and everybody was bad mouthing him. You've been he been trying this for years. So she started giving up on him. She started ridiculing him. She started bad mouthing him to his to her family members. Along come the woman he cheated with that to move up the chain. She's gonna invest in his invention. She, some family members saw it and they assumed the worst. He's cheating again. No, he's trying to get his invention. People make mistakes. He's trying to get his invention. She divorced him. Kicked him out the house. Family members praise him. Then all of a sudden his invention takes off. And she's bitter and angry. But by this time she didn't divorce him. He didn't marry another woman. The woman he cheated on with her way back when. Hmm. Moral of the story. Stop listening to everybody else. Stand by your man or your woman. Unless they're going to be taking it to somebody and giving it to somebody else. And there's nothing you can do about it. But get bitter. You understand, people? You know, somebody tried to preach to me yesterday. I had to go, I had to go into anger Christian mode. Don't try me. That's all I'm going to say. You understand? If you don't understand the story, and the thing is, the person that came with me was part of the problem. <laughs> Wow, amazing. You know, I, I value marriage. I love marriage. The Bible values it. I value it. I encourage people to get married. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a cakewalk. You got two people coming together. with From different families, different backgrounds. Trying to come together as one. And the devil is going to do whatever he can to try to take it. And destroy it. And sometimes he's going to get, he's going to win. He's gonna, he said, how can he destroy the, bind the strong man? He got to get in some kind of way. And normally he attacks the weaker vessel and sometimes the stronger vessel, the men fail. You can't expect for a man or a woman to live like that. You know, so I don't encourage divorce, but I encourage prayer. And if you pray, God's going to make a way. He's going to do what's best for your situation, not what people think is best. What he know is best for you. Thy will be done. Do you understand people? But you got to trim out the side noise. You got to realize the error of your ways. God is not going to fix something that nobody wants to recognize their problem. Let me pause and I will continue.